All right, good afternoon, Corpus Christi. We are here live with Rene Adami. And you are? French Apache. French Apache. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Native Americans here in the coastal bend. I just want to ask you one question, Rene. What is your advice for anyone who should encounter Native American artifacts on their land? Is let it be. Leave, leave it where it's at, uh, recognize it, take pictures of it if you like, uh, but put it back where you recognize it and let it be. Okay, now Native American artifacts such as pottery are found in the earth. Are they funerary objects? Could be. Could be? Very, uh, very possibility that they are, yes. Now should people d uh, be displaying Native American artifacts in their home? No, they're disrespectable. So you think it's disrespectful to keep a Native American artifact, even bones? Especially, presumably. especially bones. Okay. Especially the remains of our people, yes. Now, is the land known as Ingleside and Ingleside on the Bay Apache territory? Yes. Okay, can Very you give much. us a little bit of brief insight about the territory here in the Coastal Bend? <clears throat> the territory of the Apache uh, follows up from south of Corpus all the way to the other side of Puerto Baca. And then from the other side of Puerto Baca comes the Carancas. Okay, now is the land known as Ingleside and Ingleside on the Bay, Carancawa territory? No, not at all, no. Have you heard of the Carancawa Cadlas? Yes. Do they have a legitimate standing here in the coastal bend? Along no. E no. No? I would have to say legitimate standing in which way? Well, do they, uh, is, is, are they the majority no. In bloodline no. here in the coastal bend, or no. are they, where, where are they from? They're from uh, the Galveston and Houston area. Now, what Native Americans were in this area, here in Corpus Christi, Ingleside? Portland? We've been here for 4,000 years building the Bone Arrow. We came here 4,000 years ago to build it, and we're still here today. Now, we talked a little bit about uh, Love Sanchez. She's uh, the founder of the indigenous people of the coastal bend. Um, does she have the right to sue over land in Ingleside on the Bay on behalf of indigenous or Native American people? Um, I'm going to say no, not, not if she's going about herself as a Karanka. I, I'm going to say no because it's, 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 um, it's not Karanka land. It's not her territory to do so. Do you think Love Sancha should be stopped from what she's doing? To a certain point, yes. Now, is Love Sancha trying to change the historical facts of this area. And, and nature and how it sounds, you know, if she's not representing the Apache, then I'd have to agree to yes. I'd have to say yes, it's not cool. And is a lawsuit by Love Sanchez, the Caranco Codlas on Ingleside by the Bay legitimate? I would say no. Is the area Apache territory? Yes, very much. Now, is it okay for companies, any kind of company, uh, to dig in deep water around the bay where there are no burial grounds? Of course. Has the governor or any local official, politician, or uh, federal uh, entity recognized the Apaches? Yes. The state of Texas has recognized the Apache of this community, yes. How long ago was that? Uh, about a year and a half ago. I wrote uh, Governor Abbott a letter and I was answered by his office. Now, should remains be kept as part of the earth? Yes. Could artifacts or remains that are held in a curio cabinet in Ingleside on the Bay, Ingleside on the Bay be those of your ancestors? Yes, very much, even my direct family. It could be very much my direct family as well, just not my ancestry, but yes. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's not cool. It's not good to know that it's being displayed in this nature. Um, I think people should have more respect in, in nature and, and knowing where they're at now more that, than they knew back in the, in the 50s or 60s or 70s, you know, knowing that this is native Apache land uh, is having respect for what you find on it is, is the nature of everybody, what everybody should do. Can you tell me a little bit about your family? 
my family Adame? Yes, the Adame family. Um, what, what would you like to know? Well, just, you know, going back to wh whatever the earliest times that you know, or your family oral history. Well, we, we go back, we were, we go back from the time that all this, from the first uh, settlers that we uh, welcomed here in 1790. Uh, we go back to the very first time we started to hack down the forest that was here. We uh, go back to where we started to feel for the first time, do a cotton here. Uh, we go back as far as everything goes back in this nature when it comes to European. Okay. Now, have y'all uh, combined with other tribes or have you been part of a tribe here locally? No. No? No, we, we are a, tr a, a family, an Apache family of San Patricio County that, uh, that has been in this area for 4,000 4, years. And uh, we came here to build a bone arrow. And from that, from the point of six, the 1600s on up, we had a lot of other Apache that came here uh, that is not uh, truly the Apache of Texas. It's just the Apache that came here because of war. So I have to say to you that because of that in nature, we, we are not involved in any other tribal. We're involved just in ourselves here. Now, should com companies or entities here in the coastal bend uh, recognize Love Sanchez as the leader of the Caranquas or the indigenous people of the coastal bend? No. She's so no she, leader of our people here, no. So she doesn't have standing in this territory. Where are Caranquas uh, known to live? In the Galveston and Houston area. Okay. And can you give us a little bit of background of the French war? Or the Caracas and the French fought in, in 1670. The, the French came in through uh, Galveston and Houston to take over Louisiana. And this is where the Caracas were, and this is where the Caracas fought to almost to their extent, pretty much. Uh, what was left of the Caracas, uh, some of them came to live here with us, and a lot of them stayed in the area of Texas. Uh, but um, there was... Um, there was never no war with the Apache. Apache was not involved in that war, but uh, it was the territory of the Caracas, and it was a, a, a war that was fought with the French, the Caracas and the French. Now, in specifics, there's a man holding artifacts inside this curio cabinet. What would you tell him if he was here? To have a bit of respect. Uh, it, it is Apache uh, uh, artifacts, and there are Apache uh, remains and that uh, he should just put them back where he found them and, and just pay no attention to them and let it become part of the earth and how it was meant to be. Is there anything else that you would like to add and let the public know about the Apache? Uh, only that we are the Apache of this land and that you know, you're know you gonna find a lot of things of my family here and when you do, just have a bit of respect for it, you know, put it in this place, you know, and move it out of out of where you're going to be working or building, you know, and uh, and have respect for it, putting it back where it remains, you know, letting it be part of the earth that it started to be part of the earth at, you know, it just uh, in nature of recognizing and respecting the the Apache of this land is is uh, what we want. It's it's uh, we like very much for people to recognize us in nature of how everybody else in our country is recognized as a native. Uh, even though it's just occurring uh, to a lot of people that we have been here all these years. You know, a lot of people uh, from the 1870s, since we hit our identity, uh, they have no idea of where they're at and, and uh, no idea what they're finding. So uh, today, uh, we're, we're trying our best to put that word out so as people could better understand what territory they live in and have a bit of respect for it. Do you feel like the major news companies, news media companies here locally, have they given a proper voice for Apache, to, Apache Indians? To be heard or? Have they given the proper uh, voice for Apaches? What do you mean? I'm not, I'm not understanding Well, you know, for instance, you know, uh, whenever there's a story in, relative, in regard to... Uh, oh, to the Apache, have they spoken the truth? Yes. No, it's been a mist. It's been a mist. A mist. Can you clarify or specify what you mean by it's a mist? Uh, what, what is a mist? 
The mist is everything else besides the Apache coming here to build a bone arrow. Being here, and we came here, and because of the bone arrow, we married into almost every family that we delivered this bone arrow to in the country. Uh, we uh, uh, brought refugees here from every war and battle that we had in our country because of the bone arrow. Uh, so I have to say to you that everything that has to do with the Apache here has to do with the bone arrow. Were Apaches fishermen? Yes, very much. Very much so. Very much. There was fishermen in every family uh, that lived down the coast. Now, if people find spearheads on the ground, what would you say about that? Well, in general, like... If they're on, you know, walking on a ranch and they find spearheads, and, you know... And do you do you allow do you, do you think it's okay just to collect the uh, spearheads? Is that okay? Well, uh, you know, y yes and no. It all, it all has to do in how you're looking at it, man, and just where it's at. I mean, what what was it laying on that ground for? Was it there because there was a burial ground there? Uh, was you know, is it in that nature? We don't know. So I have to say, the best thing to do is leave it. Right. Yes. Do you believe that uh, archaeologists and geologists uh, should go digging? for these type of artifacts to preserve history? Um, yes and no. And, and yes, I'm gonna say, because it's important to preserve it. And no, if they know that this is Apache land already, why dig more? Right. You know, you know this is Apache territory, we were here, uh, let it be, just leave it alone. From my understanding, there's hundreds of, of tennis shoe boxes at the University of Texas with remains of uh, the ancestors of my of, people of, here. Of the Apache tribe. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? <sighs> From the very beginning, I have to say to you that they should have let it, let it be where they found them. They should have, uh, and if they still know where they found them, they should put them back where they found them and, and let it become part of the earth. Um, a lot of people think just because you pick up the remains of my people that you're actually picking up the whole remains of them. Uh, when when you actually have to understand that a lot of uh, a lot of that remain has become part of the earth uh, So, you know and removing bones from the earth and not removing the earth of where the bones were is not removing a native uh, You're 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 separating this you're separating the burial ground by doing that So the best thing to do is when you find these bones is to leave them where they're at, uh, especially now that we're growing in the community that's growing, we're going to find a lot of this. And, and what we need to learn to do is just dig a deeper hole and, and let it lay where it's at. Is there a leader for the Apache tribe here locally? At, at this point, no. So very much so they're, they're still disorganized. Uh, the Apache of San Patricio County. Right. Uh, pretty much, we're trying to put it together, but yes, we're not. We're not uh, established. No. Okay. Um, there's you, a lot of there's a lot of people here that live in a mist. Right. That that we need to uh, make sure that other families don't come in here with their influence, and that's what we're trying to stop from happening. At the same time, trying to, to put out the word of who we truly are. Can you give me an example of other families trying to... The Lipan Apache, they, they live in a mist. They have their different story of why they're here. And it has nothing to do with the, with the Apache of San Patricio County, the true Apache of Texas. It's got nothing to do with us. Okay. And, and it being that, that we, we hid our identity here in 1870, uh, a lot of us know but don't know and what I mean but by, by knowing is that we know that we're native because of this color of our skins you know and how we look uh, but we don't know because we hid our identity so it's as easy as any family coming in, in, in here and uh, foretelling themselves and us believing it you know and, and instead of believing the truth now I did hear uh, over here some you know um, conversations about Three Rivers. Can you tell us a little bit about Three Rivers in that area? For <clears throat> Three Rivers was a place where um, my people during the hottest part of the year would go to, and that was truly home. Uh, we would move from this area because of hurricanes during the hottest part of the year, and we would move to uh, Three Rivers. That was our true home. That was uh, uh, the true home of the Apache of Texas. Um, and Three Rivers was where our elderly were kept. Elderly, I couldn't make the journey down here to build a bow and arrow anymore. They were kept there. 
uh, the women that were having children would stay behind and stay in Three Rivers to have their children and raise them there. Uh, that was Three Rivers was our true home. It's our true home of, of the Apache of Texas. Uh, the picture that y'all are seeing about our Apache family here is much bigger in uh, Three Rivers. It's a much bigger picture in Three Rivers than there is here about our family okay. and in the area of Three Rivers. You know. What about the deer of the land? Wow, there was thousands of them here. Thousands and thousands and thousands of deers. Um, there was more deer here than there is people today in wow. this area, yes, very much. And what uh, area are we in today? We're in Rockport, Texas, We're in the right? San Patricio and Aransas County. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is, oh, this is a little bit of both? <laughs> a little bit of both, okay. yes. And it's at uh, both the places where the forest was, the for Forever Green Oak Forest was, and uh, <clears throat> thousands and thousands of deers lived in this area and around it, thousands of deers. And it was used for the string to build the bow and arrow. Really? Yes. Okay. That's... That is uh, very interesting. Yes. Um, so did what did the Apaches do to uh, protect deer? We, uh, we, we would surround ourselves around it. Uh, we would make sure that if anybody uh, killed a deer around here, that, that, that like the Karankas, if they, uh, if they killed any deer that was in Apache territory, you know, you had to use it in the right way. You couldn't just uh, take the meat and leave the rest, you know, because it was used for the string. So it was very important for that to be preserved. Uh, so we protected it with everything we had. It was, a, it was a thing that we protected because it built the bow and arrow. What other tribes were around this area other than the, you know, uh, the Apaches? It was the Karankas and the Comanche. Karankwas and the uh, Comanche. And when did Karankwas come about? They came about 4,000 years ago when the Mayans came, were, were, came in. Uh, when we noticed that we had Mayans in our country and we came across these people, we, uh, we were brought to Houston, to the Houston and San Antonio area by the Mayans. Uh, and they took us there to teach us how to build the bow and arrow and teach us a lot of other things that we didn't know that we did, uh, that we learned from them, um, and we breed it with these people, with the Mayans, the Apache did, and other families around the area, other near, near families that we had that came to see who the Mayans were, that came to recognize the bone arrow, uh, we had married into the Mayans, and um, we had a disagreement with the Mayans, and we had to move, remove them from our country, so when we started to remove the Mayans from our country, there was a family that had occurred, a new family, which was a family that breeded the Apache and other family, native families that breeded with the Mayans, and those were the Karankas. Okay. And they were left in the area of Houston and San Antonio where we uh, were taken by the Mayans to, to teach us how to, how to build a bow and arrow, how to show us everything, you know, and this is where they were left. Now, any other information that you think it's important in regard to this story on, you know, let's just say, digging up artifacts. Um, I, I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna quote what Running Turtle says, and, and I'm gonna quote it in the nature that we don't know if it was put there because there was somebody, there was one of our native people that were put there and buried there, that put themselves, laid themselves to, to rest there. Uh, we don't know if that's, that pottery was put there for that nature and if it was put there in the nature of someone's respect there well then it has to be left alone so it's better to be to to leave things like that alone because we don't know if if we've become part of that earth and the pottery hasn't become part of that earth or whatever other things you find didn't become part of the earth but we did so it's hard to say that there was a burial ground there or not renee thank you very much for sitting down with the corpus christi chronica today it's a pleasure of hearing your story, and we'll and trust me, we'll do more, much more in the future, uh, in regard to indigenous people here in the San Patricio Nueces County area. And I think we're gonna do a much bigger piece because, uh, you know, we got a hold of the Texas Historical Commission, uh, we got a hold of the UT Good. of Austin, uh, and we're getting a lot of people involved so that we can. Everybody's uh, story deserves to be told. 
Yes. And, uh, the truth. The truth. The truth. It's, it's all about the truth. And the truth in Texas is very important. Right. Yes. And, 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 and uh, it's very respectable to know that, you know, the Apache Indian tribe was the, the conqueror of this area for thousands of years yes. until 1870, from my understanding. Yes, sir. And we'll get more into depth about that. But today we're focused on digging up artifacts. Thank you very much, Renee. Thank you. Yes, sir.